I want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, we just toured the site with the governor, and uh, this, this is possible because of the governor's steadfast leadership over this past year. Uh, of course, uh, we have Cal Ripken Jr. with us. He needs no introduction, and we'll hear from him, him in a second. Uh, and then my colleague, Brigadier General uh, Burkhead, who's been leading the, the uh, Vaccine Equity Task Force. Uh, Senator Bob Castle is with us. Hartford County Executive Barry Glassman. Uh, the H Hartford County Health Officer, Dr. Boucher. And Dr. Colin Ward from uh, Upper Chesapeake. So it's my pleasure at this time to introduce Governor Hogan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Secretary Schrader. Um, look, I just want to thank all the partners here. As I say, at all of our mass vac sites, this truly is a partnership. It's a federal, state, and local government partnership with our private sector partners. And I just want to thank County Executive Glassman, the local health officer. I want to thank Upper Chesapeake and OMS for their partnership here, being our provider partners. Uh, it, it, this is a great opportunity. I want to thank the general and all of our Nas Maryland National Guardsmen who are here doing such an incredible job all across the state. We have some great uh, news. Uh, we, we've hit 5 million vaccines as of today. We've done 9.5 million tests, and it's really because of partners like this that help make that happen. It's not just the folks we're here thanking today, but it's 11,400 other people that are involved in this every single day, and it's been a massive undertaking. We're uh, well ahead of where we expected to be at this point. And our main message here today is that as, as we start to get such a large percentage of people vaccinated, we have 85% of everybody over 65 has been vaccinated, and 63% of everybody o over 18 has been vaccinated. But we've got to get those last few folks out, and that's what we're here to encourage people today. To, if you have not been vaccinated, please come out to any one of our 3,000 points of distribution. There's no waiting. You don't need an appointment. You can drive through. You can walk through. You can go to your primary care physician. You can go to the CVS or your local pharmacy. Uh, please go out and get vaccinated. And I know people are tired of hearing me say that, and nobody's listening anymore. So I brought my good friend, Cal Ripken. I called him, and I said, Cal, I think the media and the public is tired of hearing me talk about vaccines, but your name is on the stadium. And you're a much bigger deal, so would you come out and thank folks with us? So I just want to give Cal a minute to, to say a couple words. Thank you, Cal. Um, that's quite funny. Uh, actually, the governor, it is true. He said, uh, since your name's on the stadium, you've got to come out here with me. But he didn't have to ask um, very hard. As soon as he uh, asked me uh, to do it, we're so proud to be able to play a role um, in helping out and, uh, and to deliver the message that it is really important uh, to get vaccinated. Um, you're in the comfort of your own car, you're close to 95, uh, easy off the exit, easy through the process, um, including the wait. It might take you as much as 40 minutes to get through the process. And as we uh, get closer to normal, because it uh, feels like it's a little bit more normal now, um, we still can't, uh, can't stop. We need to get uh, everyone vaccinated. And I'm really glad and happy to be able to encourage all of those uh, that uh, haven't got vaccinated to, uh, to take the time out and uh, come out to one of these facilities and, uh, and, and get vaccinated so we can get back to the normal normalcy that we all remember. Um, so again, we feel uh, I'm honored that uh, the governor would ask me to come out uh, today. We're very proud that this facility, which we always see as a community gathering point, and th there's nothing more important uh, you know, to the community than having this here to encourage people to uh, to get vaccinated. So we're very proud, very honored, and very very uh, thankful that we could help out in a small way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Let me now introduce uh, County Executive Barry Glassman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I just want to take a moment uh, to really thank the governor, the health department, Secretary Schrader, and all the folks uh, that made this come together. You know, in Hartford County today, we're about 34 uh, percent with people that have had both shots fully vaccinated, uh, up over 43 percent that have had their first shot. So we're ready to go. Uh, last night, I did a CTY call to all our county citizens to remind them that we're open, available, and they can drive through. And finally, I just want to really thank the Ripken family. Uh, I'm glad Cal... Uh, is not in the shot with me. The last commercial we shot, we had to do it separately because they couldn't fit us in the same frame. Uh, but today I can see uh, eye to eye with the general, and I'm glad that General uh, Burkhead is here with us also. So 
We're just glad to have you. Thank you to the Ripken family. I know if Miss Vi was looking down, she would be proud that Billy and Cal opened this up to the community uh, that so we could make sure we save a lot of lives and protect all the people of the county, which they uh, love so much. So thank you all. And uh, now we'll hear a word from the county health officer, uh, Dr. Bashai. Dr. Bashai? Hi, I, I am so grateful that we have this uh, vaccine clinic here, and it really is a cooperation between state and uh, local and federal government, and it's been, been really great. Um, as, as public health, um, we usually come across saying don't do this and don't do that, don't run with scissors, don't stick your finger in the electric socket. Uh, and doctors are, are really mobilized now to say one big do. We've asked all of the doctors in Hartford County, all of the health providers, therapists, even the dentists, to get out the word. There is no health advice you can give your patients, doctors, than to tell your patient, go get vaccinated. There's nothing you can do for their health from age 16 to 99 that is going to do more for them. So patients call your doctors, doctors call your patients, nurses, dentists, podiatrists, get out the word. This is the best thing we can do for our health right now is to come and get vaccinated. Thank you, Dr. Bershai. And uh, from our clinical partner, uh, Dr. Colin Ward. Uh, thank you, Governor Hogan and, and County Executive Glassman. And Cal is famous for having a quote that said he didn't just show up for work, he showed up to work. And uh, that's really evident today. The National Guard folks, the first responders, the, the clinical team from University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health, it's never been easier to get a vaccine than it is right here in Hartford County right now. You can show up, drive up, not even leave your car, and be on your way in 40 minutes. Um, and so it's really important that you think about what this means for you. We've learned a lot about the treatment of COVID and the best defense to avoid getting COVID is this vaccine. So uh, think about getting it for yourself and for your family and for your neighbors. Thanks. Uh, that closes out the, uh, uh, the uh, formal remarks. I'll now turn it over to Governor Hogan for questions. Yeah, thanks. Uh, before I take your questions, I'll just add a couple of things. <clears throat> you know, our health metrics as a result of all these all the great work that's being done by all these partners and everybody going out and getting those five million vaccines has uh, been showing up every single day. We've had two straight weeks of great numbers with our lowest positivity rate we've had in six or seven months, uh, continuing to drop our hospitalizations, dropping for two straight weeks. Um, our cases per 100,000 is down. Our number of cases is down consecutive days. And so we're not through this yet. We just got to get those last few people vaccinated, but we're in much better shape. And everybody you can tell is more hopeful. Our goal is to try to get these shots done, to wind down these mass vac sites and to get everybody who wants a shot to get one. And uh, we want our goal is to try to get back to normal as quickly as possible. So with that, I'd be happy to take a couple questions. That's a great question. Anybody else want to answer that one? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we've still got two million people to vaccinate, and we're hoping uh, uh, to be able to provide more access. And our objective is to get people, and we think they will come. Uh, there's employers they're sending, the university students, etc. So we're very confident that uh, we will so st continue to see people at these sites for the for the for next several weeks. Yeah, and then we're uh, hopeful that next week uh, we'll get the EUA so that we can move forward with the 12 to 15 year olds, and that'll be a whole nother group of 450,000 people to try to get done as quickly as we can. Well, we're, it's not the only thing we're doing. So on the equity side, we're going into a big part of our effort now is not really the mass vac sites, which are winding down. Our big effort right now is to go in out into the community and finding those people uh, who haven't had the uh, access to a vaccine or haven't yet gotten their vaccine. And we're trying to uh, work on our confidence campaign and reach underserved communities, uh, both in urban and rural areas all across the state and try to make sure we get it done. But at the mass vac sites, you can still make an appointment. Um, and if you want to be certain to get a, a spot and a time, you can do that. But there's also, if you just at the last minute are driving by on 95 and you say, hey, I heard there's vaccines, I was watching, I heard Cal Ripken say I could go to the stadium and get a shot, you just pull right off and come get your shot. 
And uh, we're going to continue to do that and encourage people to whatever is best for them. We're going to be doing it in the schools. We're going to be doing it with their primary care physicians. And we have, you know, we have 13 mass fast sites, but we have 3,000 plus points of distribution. Uh, the, the second doses, you could come without an appointment, or you can do. They, they'll schedule you for your second dose. But if you want to go at a different time and get that at a different location, that's fine too. Well, uh, on the schools, that would be up to the state school board, but I, I don't anticipate that happening. Uh, but uh, you know, we're going to our goal is to be trying to get as many of those kids vaccinated as, as much as possible. What we've seen so far is a lot of real interest from the 16 and 17 year olds who uh, came in a little bit after the 18 years. We had one one thing that could work for them. They're lining up. They're very excited about getting it because they want to go play sports. They want to hang out with their friends. They want to get back into school. So the kids, we're hoping, are going to continue to. Uh, and really take advantage of getting those shots so we can all be safer. Uh, but our, our, our message for those who, uh, who are not getting vaccinated is you've got to get out and do it. Everybody says, when can we get back to normal? Well, we can get back to normal when everybody gets their vaccine or when we get a large percentage of people vaccinated. Uh, you know, it's the only way to keep yourself, your family, and your neighbors safe. Uh, in spite of all the great progress and all of our numbers doing great, if you are not vaccinated, you're still in grave danger. You still, these are dangerous variants that are out there. We have younger people being hospitalized. Get your vaccine, you'll be safe, you won't get sick. If you don't get your vaccine, you can still be in the hospital and you can still die. That's the best message I can give you. We've called on the mayor and the police commissioner to uh, come down to Annapolis as fast as possible. Uh, we want to hear about a, any kind of a crime plan they might have. Um, you know, last time I met with the police commissioner, they had a plan that we didn't like and gave them a lot of suggestions on, which they didn't listen to. But uh, we've already reached out to uh, ask the mayor and his police commissioner uh, to, to come down to Annapolis so we can hear what kind of a plan they do have. We haven't heard one so far. But I don't, I don't think it's controversial. I think almost everybody believes that violent crime in Baltimore City is a terrible problem and that people need to step up and get to work. Yeah, we, 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 we shut that down because it was totally ineffective and because they said they didn't want to focus on violent crime. Well, I mean, we've put more than a billion dollars into public safety in Baltimore City, and uh, I could give you a 20-page memo on all the things that we've done, paying for most of the effort there, but I just don't think uh, National Guard is the right person to be policing the streets of Baltimore rather than well-trained police officers. The state police is much smaller than the Baltimore City Police, and they're also trained to do a different mission, and they're spread all over the state. But we're going to continue to provide whatever help we can. Our big, our big push right now is to see if we can get the mayor police commissioner and the, and the uh, prosecutor focused on violent crime and if they can come down and give us a comprehensive plan. And then if it makes sense, then we'll provide whatever assistance we can. But this is their job and they got to get their job done. Last question. Uh, I didn't see the uh, order that came down today, but, uh, you know, we still have our, our same uh, effort in place on evictions uh, with or without the federal order. Thank, Thank you. you.